Taiwan has almost the highest recycling rate in the world. We are in the island, there's not much resources coming in. So every resource has to be reused. Miniwiz is a start off with a broad mission. We think it is wise to minimize. We think we have to minimize carbon footprint by using recycled resources. I think my personal story start off with lots of anger. There's a lot of things that's in the world in this system is not very fair. How people are treated, how material are being distributed, how wealth are being distributed. Of course, this is another societal problem. Uh, what we started off with is how to make green power devices to power your cell phones. The idea is we have to link green living, green materials into people's hands. Every year, we have one or two Mission Impossible projects. So crazy that people are like, wow, recycled material can fly? And that, it's fun. This plane is called Rutan Very Easy. Why can we do airplane wings? Because that is where all the forces are actually being, uh, has a, subjected to the most amount of negative and positive forces. Okay, it's a cantilever beam. It also has the biggest temperature differential. The top of a plane is hot, bottom is coal. This is a great exercise. So we came out with a material specifically tailored to design for this. You don't tell the people that it's recycled material. You tell people that, wow, how you can develop a structure, a system that's so innovative that catches people's eyes and catches people's imagination. I was actually teaching in Taiwan, in Jiao Tong University and Donghai University because I was preaching this sustainable concept. Since I'm much more hands-on as a person, I want to make something. From that ethos of making, I just didn't want to do school anymore, so I started Miniwiz. Today, we are at one of Miniwiz's biggest partners, collaborators, factory, called Bangxie. Okay. Bangxie, Andy is the chief R&D officer for the, uh, this corporation. They specialize in collecting and re-engineering post-consumer materials. Yeah. This is one of the biggest material that's derived from post-consumer packaging. What you are seeing here, it can include um, straw, little pieces of straw, and bottle caps from all kinds of your drinks that you drink from. This painful R&D experience is fun. It really depends on the entrepreneur's tolerance of that pain. So obviously we have a group of people that are quite capable of tolerating that uncertainty. We're located now at a beer factory and slash a restaurant experience restaurant by Labrador. One of the interesting concepts the owner of the LBD proposed to us was that whether they can use the leftover from the beer production and turn that into a color schemes and a set of architecture material for the interior spaces. Even from the chair all the way to the ceiling, it's all made from the leftover of a beer manufacturing, made from wheat husk and beer huff. They decided that they can take some of the old bottles and turn that into walls. When I was in Taiwan, I was a very happy kid. But when I went to the U.S., it's completely opposite. Almost when, as soon as I land, like everybody make fun of me make fun of my parents, make fun of me. This immigrant story I think is great because that creates like ethos of you have to prove someone that's wrong. That's when I started like exercise every day and then you know join the team, fights all the time, got arrested a couple of times. When you're young, the only thing you have to offer is energy and passion. So then you have to figure out how do you use your energy, you use your brain, use your physical force to create something that accumulate knowledge, accumulate experience to make the world better. Once you started this never cannot turn back path of 
entrepreneurship because it's all about accumulating enough courage to start a new project, to start a new innovation, to fight every day.